very own center on Seamers Drive in Cape. By All right, Southeast we got weather Health. forecast, when and then we'll go. In quality matter, choose Southeast Health. And by the Cape Girardeau Conservation Nature Center at Cape County Park North. And now, your ESPN Radio Network local, local weather forecast. The National Weather Service says sunny and hot today and tomorrow with temperatures 90 to 92. The low is about 72 degrees. Thursday, a slight chance of a pop-up shower or thunderstorm with a high of 90. 40% cliff of storms and a high of 86 on Friday. Chance of rain on Saturday with a high of 80. And right now, Sunday and Monday, a high of 80 degrees with plenty of sunshine. You're up to date with the latest weather forecast. Breaking on the ESPN radio network. Well, dude, obviously, be better as the focal point of the show. Would I be better for society? No. Don't miss Russillo and Cano. Man, they just brought your wings out, too, didn't they? ESPN. This is a proud presentation of Mississippi River Radio Sports. The Sports Authority. And now, at last. It's time for the Red Hawks Coaches Show on the SEMO ESPN Radio Sports Network. I have more to tell you. The Southeast Coaches Show airs every Tuesday at noon on ESPN 92.9 FM at 1220 AM. Live from Wings, etc. in Cape and Jackson. This is your chance to delve deep, deep into the Red Hawks football season with head coach Tom Matukowicz. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go live to Wings, etc. Right here on SEMO. Welcome in another edition of the Red Hawks Coaches Show. We are live from Wings, etc. in Cape Girardeau. And uh, make uh, plans to join us next Monday. We'll be in the Jackson location next week, but we are in Cape today. So if you have not decided what you would like to do for lunch, why not stop by here and join us? In addition to their award-winning Jumbo Wings, for dine-in and carry-out, they also have a full menu featuring their freshly made burgers. They have wraps, subs, quesadillas, entree salads, smoked ribs, and plenty more, including their famous appetizer lineup, which includes their ultimate nachos, their spicy deep-fried pickle spears, and the high-def TVs tuned in to all the best sports programming, including the NFL ticket. And don't forget, the NFL starts actually in 48 hours. The first game will be Thursday night, we invite you to stop by and join us here at Wings. Coach Tom Matukowicz is here as the Red Hawks uh, go to Memphis and drop a 35-17 decision. We're going to talk with uh, running back Will Young. He's got to be at a class at 1230, so we're going to get him on very early on in the show. Uh, but, Coach Tuke, uh, we grabbed you up here right when you got your wings. It looks like uh, you're going with wings today. Yep, try to mix it up a little bit. Last time I went with the, the Tuesday rib tips and today uh, some medium wings. You know, I like their wings, but I can't do spicy. Yeah. My uh, nine-year-old gets them hot and I get a medium. So it's a little bit of issue at the family. Jeff Hansa, how, how hot does that guy eat his wings? Yeah. Have you ever he's seen a, some yeah, of this stuff? Yeah, he's a big fan of the hot stuff. I, uh, can't, I can't do that. I don't get it. I really don't get it. And we've known Hansa for quite a long time. You knew you knew Hansa when he was uh, at SIU, when you were at SIU. Yeah, so. absolutely. We worked together. Uh, I remember uh, working on our, our media guy together when we were there. And um, you have a lot of respect for the job that he does. And, you know, he was a college football player, defensive end. And uh, he's got a great family. And so uh, I've really enjoyed that relationship. Now, he got some FaceTime on the TV show last night. Yeah. What happened there? He was big time. Yeah. You know, he's up there. and uh, uh, But I think people don't realize just all the amazing support staff we have. You know, it's the players and the coaches. But, you know, all these people behind the scenes that, that make things like even this and, and uh, all the media uh, type requests happen. Um, you know, just want to make sure all the, the, the hard work that those people get in, that they get some recognition for that. All right, uh, the Memphis Tigers. Uh, we're going to talk to Will Young coming up momentarily. But uh, what were your what were your thoughts now that you've had a chance to go back and watch a video of the game? I know you you have uh, a certain set of thoughts right after the game. Some things can change or clarify once you get a look at video. What were your thoughts? Well, I was um, pleased with the second, third, and fourth quarter, but we just didn't start well. Had a lot of miscues. Um, I think we were ready to go, and when we didn't have success right away, we we kind of got on our heels a little bit, which led to a couple other issues, and then we were able to calm down, but we can't have those. Um, you know, we got to find a way to not. I think uh, defensively, uh, for the, the situations that we were put in, I think we played great. Special teams uh, made my eyes hurt. 
Um, that's going to be really my my main focus this week. And offensively, we kind of found our groove. We talked a lot about, uh, you know, my text a little bit with Jesse and all the other parts there, but we felt comfortable with the players we had. Now we just got to get comfortable with each other and find that rhythm. And then that, that I don't know what it was, was it 12-play drive or what was the – the drive we had at the end of the game yeah. was just a really nice drive. A lot of fourteen plays, 14 plays eighty-two yeah. yards, and so that that was uh, they, I was still their their ones were still in. They didn't um, you know sub that bay out. So I think we can build on that and, and ready to go this week. Now, one thing that that I was impressed with, I thought their quarterback was really accurate. Didn't you? Yeah, yeah. That was a wild card. You know, we 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 loaded up the box and we were like, hey, if if that guy can throw it, then we may not win this game. And um, he really hit some hands that were tight, good balls. Um, we did turn him over a couple times, um, and and I think that's just, you know, your first first game out. And I think um, they'll get that fixed, and I think they're going to have a really good year. This is a team, remember, that uh, was number 13 in the nation last year. They started 8-0, and uh, and they were nationally ranked top 25 the year before that. So they've won 19 games the last two years, most in school history. I mean, it's a good football yeah. program. Yeah, got some good players, and, um, you know, their coach uh, was left with good players, but he had them ready to go, and, and they, they really did a good job. So we have a lot of um, – you know, a lot of respect for them. Yeah, we'll uh, get more into the game. We'll talk about SIU, the opponent coming up this Saturday. But uh, we know that Will Young has to go to a class around 1230. So we want to bring him on. But uh, your thoughts on the performance from Will Young, uh, that 61-yard touchdown run he he ripped off, that was an epic run. They had him near the line of scrimmage. He broke free. And then about 30 yards downfield or 40 yards downfield on the 61-yard run, they had another crack at him and couldn't bring him down. That was a really, really good run. Yeah, and I don't know if people know, but that actually made college game day top five plays. So he was on ESPN. And so that, obviously, he'll tell you that it took a lot more people to see that. But I want everybody to listen to what I'm about to say. So if you got a wing in your hand, put it down. <laughs> All right. Because what people see is the shine. People see the ESPN. But here's the Will Young you haven't seen. Okay. So if you got a wing, put it down because I want you to hear this. In high school, he broke his femur. Okay. In high school, he had a major ACL reconstruction. Freshman year in college, major ACL reception. Last year, he paid us to play. And this year he's on a full scholarship on ESPN, and that's why I could French kiss that guy in a speedo. I'm so proud of him, and, and good for him. All right. Uh, without further ado, let's bring it. Let's bring him up here. I mean, uh, all this talk of French kissing. Uh, let's bring Will Young on up, and we'll get his thoughts on just exactly how things transpired uh, in the Memphis game. Will finishing with his first 100-yard rushing game of his career. He finished 17 carries, 114 yards. He averaged almost seven yards per carry, the 61-yard touchdown run, and that was his second touchdown as a Red Hawk. Boy, uh, broken femur, multiple ACLs. Uh, you, tell us uh, – how tough that is to to at some point not say you know what maybe I'm just not supposed to keep playing football. Uh, honestly, it is pretty tough. But uh, if you, with my faith background and how I was raised, it was it was pretty easy to come back from just knowing that uh, my family's behind me and I have uh, God behind my back to always be there for me. Now, for those who are pretty well schooled. Uh, the femur is the biggest bone in the body. How how did that happen? Uh, it's, I was running the ball, came through the hole, made it to the secondary, and uh, safety came downhill and took me out. Pretty, so that, uh, did you did you know right away it was pretty serious? Yeah, you you feel that <laughs> one of, one of the strongest bones in your body. You feel that and it was a uh, it was kind of it was actually sticking out. Mm. It wasn't out of my skin, but it right. was it was bulged out. So yeah, I knew. Wow. Well, you didn't uh, – what's interesting is in junior college, uh, you didn't have a lot of mileage. You had a lot of guys uh, kind of above you on mm -hmm. the depth chart. So in terms of wear and tear other than yeah. the injuries, uh, you really have minimized the, the wear yeah. and tear, right, in terms yeah. of mileage on your tires? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's that's one of the big things that I'm happy about. Uh, it just kind of worked out that way, so I'm not, not 
mad about it. All right, so you get in the games uh, last year, only five carries, but you got a touchdown against Austin P. How how fun was that to finally get in and contribute at Division One at the end of last season? That was that was great. My family was actually there to see that my first uh, NCAA touchdown. So that was that was amazing, and uh, my team was behind me. They were happy for me, so that really made it fun too. In two years at junior college, 400 yards and three touchdowns. So you didn't get to a ton of playing time, but when you did play, you averaged almost six yards per mm-hmm. run. Tell us about uh, some of the guys that were, that were ahead of you on the depth chart at junior college. Uh, well, in junior college, there is a lot of politics. So when you have guys that have been to bigger schools and drop down, they usually get looked at yeah. a little bit sooner than, say, a guy – like myself, that's coming straight from high school to a junior college. So uh, that just goes back to what Coach Tukes always he always preaches to be ready when your opportunity arises. So uh, in junior college, they they tell me to go in, and I go in to give the guy that was ahead of me a rest, and I'd always produce, but just never worked out. So well, what uh, what was it like the recruiting process? And because sometimes if you're a star mm-hmm. in junior college, you know it's mm-hmm. it's easy to draw the attention of yeah. of Division one coaches. Uh, but clearly, you didn't see a whole lot of playing time, so they really had to work to to find out about you, right? Yeah, and uh, well, how I got noticed was just on special teams because special teams really determines if a player cares for his team or not. And uh, if you play a lot of special teams and you do well, then coaches look at that and say, oh, I like this guy. I want I want him on my team. So in junior college, I, I focus on special teams a lot, and it, it really helped. And uh, Coach Martin, our special teams coordinator, who was also the one that recruited me out of JUCO, uh, he saw my film, liked it, and uh, wanted me to come join the Red Hawks. That is a fantastic story. Will Young, our guest here on the Coaches Show. Now, you're from Wichita, Kansas. I've been out to Wichita a few times, uh, but it's uh, it's late summer. Man, you talk about hot. a hot place to Human? be, man. It, yeah. It's uh, it's regularly triple digits out there, yeah. right? It's pretty hot in Wichita. Well, or as small as the, the city is, and it's in Kansas, eastern Kansas, it's pretty hot. What was it like growing up in Wichita? Uh, it was fun. Um, I had a lot of guys to look up to. Uh, Joseph Randall, he uh, he went to the same high school I did. I don't know if you know him. He, he played for the Cowboys. Yep. Got into a lot of trouble. He wasn't like that in high school, sadly. But uh, I had another guy that I looked up to who also played running back. He uh, His name is Jeremy Smith. I believe he plays for the San Diego Chargers right now. He went to a JUCO and uh, was pretty famous. He, he ended up transferring out to West Virginia made a name for herself and then got picked up by the San Diego Chargers. So uh, Wichita is known for a little bit of talent here how, and there. How about uh, – what's interesting is uh, Wichita State, uh, mm-hmm. no – I mean, that's the big university, but yeah. no football out there. Yeah, that's, that's sad. I always – growing up, my, my friends and cousins and I would always tease each other saying that uh, if if Wichita State gets a, a program going by the time – we're in college. We'd all go there, but they never did. So it's sad. Uh, they've they've been mentioning here and there that they they might get one back, but nothing yet. I've heard the chatter though about yeah. uh, maybe Wichita State uh, getting a football program. As far as uh, growing up, what was football the sport? Did you did you play anything else? Basketball, baseball, uh, I, soccer. I tinkled in basketball a little bit. It's a little bit too much too much technical for me though. I might chip up the ball or something. But uh, soccer. Too much running. Yeah. I wrestled a little bit and uh, ran track just a little bit. Well, a couple of years ago, uh, we had a guy named Ron Coleman who was yeah. here, a, a four-time state champion wrestler, nationally ranked mm-hmm. uh, you know, pretty good. Uh, guys that uh, that wrestle kind of have a, a knowledge of leverage, which yeah. is big in this sport, it right? It is. It really helps, especially when it comes to blocking, just had placement, body placement, knowing the guy's weight, if he's pushing against you or not. That really helps. So just having a background in wrestling, that, that's helped me a lot too. All right, let's talk about your uh, touchdown run. When did you? First of all, when did you hear that you had made ESPN 
uh, and uh, and take us through the run. Did you think, uh, you know, once you initially broke containment that you were going to go the distance? Did you think that last guy was going to get you? What was what was going through your, your mind on the touchdown run? Uh, well, I didn't know I was going to score until I got to the goal line because when I hit about the 20-yard line, break, breaking the last tackle, I was dog tired. I didn't yeah. think I'd make it just because of uh, conditioning. But uh, initially, once I got the ball and made it through the line of scrimmage, I, I saw a lane, and out of nowhere, two guys just ran toward me. So just out of instinct, I lowered my head and ended up breaking through the tackles, and uh, the rest is history. When you got down near the, the I don't know, maybe the 15 or the 20, wherever the final mm-hmm. guy was down, their last chance to get you, what, what's mm-hmm. going through your mind? Did you think he was going to pull you down? Uh, No. No, my, my mind was set on scoring the touchdown. So uh, once I once I broke through the first two tackles and I seen nothing but daylight, I was like, nothing can stop me now. So by any means, I was going to score that touchdown. All right. How many times have you watched a video of the touchdown? Honestly, I've only watched it twice. I don't okay. I don't really want to watch it a lot, but uh, it, it didn't take long. As soon as we got on the bus to head back to Cape, all my teammates were saying, you're on ESPN, you're on ESPN. Check out the video. I'm like, really? That, that's pretty cool, though. It was fun. Will Young, our guest, and he finishes his day with 114 rushing yards against the Memphis Tigers. Uh, their official attendance, 42,000. What did you mm-hmm. What did you think of the atmosphere playing at Memphis on Saturday? Oh, that was that was amazing. Just being that was my first time starting, so starting in front of a crowd like that was was amazing. I never experienced anything like that in high school. Or at JUCO, so yeah, that was that was pretty exciting. Any Nothing nerves like early on for you in particular? And did you notice? Can you tell in the huddle if there are nerves? It, it, it appeared um, that maybe early on nerves were a factor with the team. Maybe, maybe not. I wouldn't say it was nerves. It was just, excuse me, a matter of just being the first game, getting the chemistry going. Because as as you saw. The more the game went on, the the better the office was executing and uh, clicking. So, boy, I would think as a running back, you've got to feel pretty good to, to have such a veteran yeah. offensive line. I mean, some of these guys, yeah. uh, you're talking about Garrett Baker, 23 starts. Jake McCandless, the center, 34 mm-hmm. Division One starts. That's, Michael that's Cook, Alex Snyder, they yeah. started every game last year and despite uh saturday being drew forbes first start he played a heck of a lot played well last year played so you, you you were around these guys all of last year although yes. you didn't get to, to play a lot how much of a luxury is that as a running back to know hey man we got some veteran guys up honestly I, I know what demarco mary feels like now just having an amazing online in front of him it uh it opens up a lot of opportunities not for yourself but also for the offense uh, I know our quarterback really enjoys it too because he's uh he's hardly ever touched back there in the pocket. So uh, yeah. was not sacked in the second half of the game, by the way, Jesse Hoskett. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, on going across the river here? Now you were uh, mm-hmm. on the roster last year when the Salukis came over here, yeah. and I believe seven turnovers, uh, four fumbles, three mm-hmm. picks. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, trying to beat SIU back to back years? I don't think it's happened since two thousand one. And 2002, a long yeah. time. You probably in grade school back then. Mm, 2002, I was yeah. second grade. Yeah, that was amazing. But uh, honestly, that game is always a big game. It's it's always talked about a lot, especially around the locals here in Cape. And uh, last year when they came in, just being the first home game of the season, it was uh, it was pretty big. Uh, the crowd was amazing. And uh, when we won the game, everyone rushed the field. So that was also pretty big. It was fun. That was probably one of my, my favorite memories playing here thus far. So And do uh, – is it is it talked about at all that, uh, hey, that's where Coach Tuke used to coach? He, he might uh, he might very well like to beat this team. Uh, not not so much that he used to coach there. Just uh, all focus on them beating them and uh, getting the season going. All right. Uh, they just played an FBS school, played a, a – Played a close game, 38-30, with Florida Atlantic. Uh, I believe they they had a lead in the third quarter, but ended up losing uh-huh. the football game by eight. Uh, so, as far as uh, social media, we always yeah. we always if someone's on Twitter, we always want to try to get their mm-hmm. their uh, Twitter handle out there. Are you on Twitter? 
I'm not on Twitter. Okay. I'm on uh, Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. So they can look you up on Facebook yeah, if they want William to. William Young. All right. William Comments Young. Uh, so what uh, What? Uh, what are your thoughts for the entire season? Uh, preseason yeah. polls, you know, how, what are they good for? They're good um, for talking just points. Numbers. Yeah, you guys, just numbers. You guys picked to finish fifth. Yeah. Jacksonville State, two-time defending champs. Uh, what's, the, what's the mindset of the team here? You're still a couple of weeks yeah. away from playing your first conference game. Uh, the mindset is there. Like you said, the preseason polls, all the numbers, they they fail to, to measure one of the biggest aspects in this game, and that's heart. And our team is, is full of heart just because of the amount of leadership and the number of veterans we have on the team. This season is going to be a pretty big one, pretty one, one to remember. All right, uh, you got to get going. Because you've got a class. Now, tell us again the name of the class it that is you've got. Family and Marriage. Family and Marriage. That's the class that, uh, that Will's going to go. Uh, uh, th- those are important topics. Are you, important you'll topic. you'll yeah. find that out uh, yeah. the, the, uh, as you get a little bit older. We appreciate the time. Congratulations on a heck, of a, a heck of a game on uh, the ESPN highlight. And we'll see you Saturday over in Carbondale. Thank Will, you. thanks so much. Will Young, our guest here on the Coach's Show. Let's take a quick time out. Coach Took will rejoin us, and we'll recap uh, the Memphis Tiger loss, 35-17. Red Hawks outplayed Memphis in the second half, outscored them 14-6. to We'll talk that over with Coach Took and uh, get a little preview of the game coming up against SIU. And uh, the Salukis put up 530 yards in their first game of the year. It's the Red Hawks Coaches Show from Wings, Etc. in Cape on SEMO ESPN. It's been growing about Wings, Etc. See, Wings, Etc. has those award-winning jumbo wings. They're popular for both dine-in and carry-out. Now the word is getting out about Wings, Etc.'s appetizer lineup. From the ultimate nachos to the deep-fried pickle spears, frankly, they're irresistible. Friends are sharing time together at Wings Etc. They've got dining rooms filled with HD TVs tuned to the best sports programming, including NFL Sunday Ticket. The people at the next table are talking about Wings Etc.'s daily half-pound lunch special, starting at just six forty-nine. Plus, Wings Etc. has food and drink specials throughout the week, including fifty-nine cent wings every Monday. Plus, there's the kids' menu, and Wings Etc. is family-friendly with video games in the dining room. And the whole community is excited about how Wings Etc. is locally owned and operated, and they're proud to support local athletes, their families, schools, and teams. I guess Wings Etc. is a really big deal around here. River Radio is now hiring. Part-time employees are needed for building watch duties and occasional board operating for sports and other remote events on weekends and holidays. If you're looking to get your foot in the broadcasting door, this is a great place to start. Pick up an application or drop off your resume at 324 Broadway in Cape Girardeau between our business hours, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Join the River Radio team today. River Radio is an equal opportunity employer. Saturday night, the Red Hawks football team crosses the river for a showdown with the SIU Salukis at 6 o'clock. Pre-game coverage starts Saturday at 5.30 on SEMO ESPN 92.9 and Real Rock 99.3 FM. Online at SEMOESPN.com. Red Hawks football presented by Moreland Pre-Owned Center on Seamers Drive in Cape. By Southeast Health, when cost and quality matter, choose Southeast Health. And by the Cape Girardeau Conservation Nature Center at Cape County Park North. And now, your ESPN Radio Network local, local weather forecast. The National Weather Service says sunny and hot today and tomorrow with temperatures 90 to 92. The low is about 72 degrees. Thursday, a slight chance of a pop-up shower or thunderstorm with a high of 90. 40% cliff of storms and a high of 86 on Friday. Chance of rain on Saturday with a high of 80. And right now, Sunday and Monday, a high of 80 degrees with plenty of sunshine. You're up to date with the latest weather forecast. Breaking on the ESPN Radio Network. For the Saturday Morning Express, catch it every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. On CBS ESPN. It's the Red Hawks Coaches Show, live from Wings, etc. in Cape Girardeau, where they've got a comfortable, laid-back family atmosphere, great food, great service. And if you're joining us for lunch, don't forget about their daily half-pound lunch specials starting at just 6 
49. They've got food and drink specials throughout the week, including 59 cent wings every Monday. They have a kids menu. They've got family friendly video games in the dining room, and they are open seven days a week at both locations, both Cape and Jackson. And they're open late on the weekends because the games run late. It's Wings, etc., home of the Red Hawks Coaches Show. Rejoining us, uh, good to hear from Will Young, uh, the, the people that uh, had to put their wings down uh, by virtue of you telling them to shut it down, uh, needed to uh, to hear a, a story like that. That's a that's a motivational type story, a guy like Will Young. Yeah, it really is, and it's a great life lesson. You know, you don't get on – you know, people don't see the grind. They don't see what he's done up until that moment. They just see that moment, and you think, well, that just happened. And, and they and they don't realize just what that kid's been through. And, and uh, you know, it's what makes our job so fun. Boy, and he's a guy, for anybody that has not seen him run, uh, you don't arm tackle, Will Young. Yeah. I mean, he's a big guy that can step out of tackles. Yeah, I believe he's a 600-pound squatter. He's, if he's not 600, it's it's right up there. Uh, uh, but he can lift with most of our, our D linemen. He is an extremely strong kid. Uh, so what were your thoughts on uh, on he and uh, Chase Abington uh, in the backfield? Chase didn't uh, didn't see a whole lot of daylight. They they, they did a nice job on him, but uh, that was the running back tandem you had in week one. Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> they're like all the other guys. They got about 10 plays they got to try and fix. There's a couple schematic things that they know, uh, you know, we showed them that they really need to try to take off the film. But I think as far as running the ball, they did a nice job. And you got uh, four carries for Tremaine McCullough, so you did hand him the football, and he had nine catches to lead you. So, uh, you know, that's that was the game plan going in to the season, try and get Tremaine McCullough a lot of touches, and he had a lot of touches. Yep, yep. He, you know, he, he let a couple balls uh, get through there and a couple MAs, so he's, he's just like Will and like the rest of them, um, you know, just, just trying to work on, uh, <clears throat> you know, taken off the film from mistakes and all those things. Uh, Jesse Hoskett, uh, he looked like he got more comfortable as the game went along. He went 19 of 31, 143 yards, and the touchdown pass of eight yards to Adrian Davis. I think he started one for his first five passes, so he got out of the gate slowly, but he finished pretty strong. Yeah, <clears throat> it's that same thing. Like, you were going into that game blind. You really didn't have a great idea of what you're going to see, and that just makes it tough. Um, but <clears throat> the thing that uh, I appreciated is is he was the same. Like, he didn't get rattled. You didn't see, like, frustration. Uh, you didn't see, hey, I, you know, we're not doing anything, so I'm going to go try to make a play, and then all of a sudden it's real bad. He just he just kept trying to do his job and, uh, you know, kept coming to work and, and did it, you know, finish the game nice. He did not have a turnover, and you win the turnover battle, as you yeah. did so often last year. You went from worst to first in turnover margin in the Ohio Valley Conference, a plus 10 a season ago, but you win the turnover battle three to one. Interceptions for Roper Garrett. Also, um, Mike Ford had an interception, and then you recovered a fumble. So you turned their quarterback <laughs> over three times. Yeah, that was that was the best part. And, um you know, we had a blocked punt, which is a turnover. It's not statistically, uh, but we you can only lost a turnover. The, yeah, not only lost the 50 yards of the punt, but then lost the 15 yards. So that's a turnover. And our defense uh, did what? They come out and create a turnover. So that was in the red zone. I mean, that was a huge point of play where you know it could it could have got away from us yeah. and, and you know been a bad deal. So. Like I said, I think there's plenty of heart and character on this football team, and now we just got to uh, play better football. Uh, as far as your punter goes, uh, Alex Knight, who I don't know what you have to do to be first team all conference. You lead a Division One conference in punting, you're usually all conference. No, uh, he led the, the conference by a full yard over Ruzak, the Eastern Kentucky kid. Uh, he's also on three All-American teams. Well, he went out and uh, showed everybody who the top punter in the league is. Uh, eight punts. You'd rather him not have to punt eight times, but over 50 yards average. I mean, that that is just phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, he's a he's a weapon. He can flip the field. And <clears throat> excuse me. He does a great job, and and he's he's you know gotten better, which he was pretty good last year. But so far, he's gotten better, and and uh, 
but I, I'm going to challenge everyone on this football team like the rest of us need to pick it up. Like that, that's the last time I'm going to get my butt whipped on special teams here. Or Lena could coach the team. That she just showed us her muscle, uh, so she she's excited about that. Uh, going into the game, they had a guy that led the American Athletic Conference in punting, so they've they've got a, a first team all conference punter. You had the better punter on the field Saturday, no question. Yep, for sure. So you know, <clears throat> hopefully uh, we don't punt that much and, and we're ready to go. All right, uh, Adrian Davis catches a touchdown pass there in the fourth quarter with about three minutes and twenty five seconds left. Uh, in the football game, Adrian Davis, who goes six feet three, he's long, uh, very athletic kid. Uh, it was a really good throw by Jesse Hoskett, but uh, coming all the way back for Adrian Davis, I mean, that was a pretty serious knee injury he suffered last year. Yeah, I, I think we talk about Adrian because he got the touchdown, but uh, I think we could probably talk about four or five receivers that, you know, not a lot of people knew much about that did a nice job. And so, <clears throat> I think just like the rest of them, you look at at, at those players and, and what they they can do, and yet you, you feel good about uh, being able to get this thing together. And Christian Wilkerson, it had to feel neat for him. Uh, he comes back. He is from Memphis. Uh, catches five balls for forty eight yards, including a a twenty one yard reception from Jesse Hoskin, and that ended up being the longest pass play of the night for you. Twenty one yards to Christian Wilkerson. That was our first look at him. Boy, he looks like he's going to be a player. Yeah, I mean, he's he's still young, you know, and uh, he's dropped some weight, increased his speed, and and real proud of the progress he's had. Um, <clears throat> you know, he had some really negative plays in special teams. And so that it's just kind of like the whole football team. You know, we had some good plays, but each and every one of us, coaches including, you know, uh, have some things in their game that they got to get better at. Uh, speaking of Adrian Davis, uh, boy, it, that was an awful late hit he took after he uh, he caught that touchdown. Yeah, I thought we had a couple that were could have been called, um, but uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, they get, we got the touchdown, so they didn't call it. Um, but I think if that was opposite, if that was a Memphis guy and we hit him like that, um, yeah, it probably would have got called. Uh, did you think about uh, onside kicking after that? Uh, if we were in two scores. You know, if you're three scores out, you know, you're right. just, um, you know, so no. As far as uh, the total number of plays that you ran in the football game, 63. Where do you, where, where, what's good for you? Where do you like to be in terms of? Uh, 70s, like 73 would yeah. have been a good good number. You know, we're not a no huddle team. We're not a tempo team. Um, we want to be a physical, high execution team. And so, um that's probably where we're at. You know, a team like SIU, you know, will probably be in the 80s to 90s because of just what they want to try and accomplish. How different uh, is their offense from what you saw from Dale Lennon last year versus what you're seeing this year? Uh, through one game, they had 530 yards of offense. And let's not forget, they had 659 yards of offense the week before they played you last year yeah. at Indiana. Well, I think it all goes through Nick Hill, you know, so I think schematically it's very similar. I think it's just a different quarterback. You know, that is the main – really, they bring everybody back. You know, they got a veteran offense, and the quarterback's new, but he's a fifth-year uh, senior. He's played a lot of football, and so the difference between him and the last guy is, you know, the design runs. Um, they won't be near of, and they'll, they'll probably throw the ball a little bit more. Josh Strawn is their quarterback's name. Uh, he attempted 51 passes in their 38-30 loss to Florida Atlantic. They had the lead in the third quarter, but he throws for 357 yards and a touchdown. He was sacked three times and was named the Missouri Valley Conference uh, player or, or newcomer of the week. What do you see? Uh, because they waited a long time, kind of like you, to announce who their starting quarterback was going to be, yep. and it ended up being Strawn. I think uh, he's he's uh, what I look for in a quarterback. He's a great game manager. You know, a lot of the best plays he made was when he didn't throw it. You know, he didn't turn it over, uh, you know, and just really manage the game. Uh, you know, I know Nick feels good with him because uh, he's like a quarterback out there. You know, he knows how you're going to line up, and he's going to be able to deal that ball, and we got to do a great job with it. Now they got a touchdown pass from Sam Straub late in the fourth quarter. What what uh, what was that about? Helmet came off. 
Uh, so uh, Josh had to come out, and then the new guy come in, and you you wouldn't believe it. Rolled the ball back. The quarterback was fumbling it, tossed it. The corner went up to high point the ball, and volleyball set it to the wideout touchdown. And next thing you know, hand steams out. Deflection then. Wow. Okay. Well, that's 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 how they scored their final. Uh, that was their final uh, piece of scoring in the football game. So then they ran it onside kick and didn't pick it up. Right. Okay. As for they, they had a chance to, you know, they had time with the two minute. They had a chance to drive down on a win, and and uh, uh, one of the running backs turned it over. Uh, Daquan Isom uh, ended up with a long touchdown run of sixty nine yards. He carried it five times for. 80 yards, uh, Isom, a guy that uh, you saw last year. He's yep, back. and had a lot of good uh, plays a year ago, and we definitely know who number five is. and um, You know, just an outstanding uh, skill player, itty-bitty, um, but he is he is he's rocket fast. Uh, Dale Lennon, uh, no longer the coach there. They went with Nick Hill, uh, first time being a coach. Uh, what What's your uh, long-term relationship with Nick Hill? Because he was at SIU when you were there. I, I love Nick Hill. I mean, I, I love him. Uh, unfortunately, we it's we probably not going to ever – we're not going to be able to have a relationship now because we're, we're competitors. Um, you know, uh, I wish him nothing but the best, but definitely not versus the Red Hawks. As far as uh, tendencies, what do you what do you uh, what do you see when you see a Nick Hill uh, led offense? Obviously, they, they put up a lot of a lot of just, numbers. Just a really good football coach. You're going to put up a lot of numbers, and um, I just have a lot of respect for him. Even as a player, uh, you know, I wasn't an offensive coach; I was a defensive coach. But even as a as a player, I had a relationship with him because I just I just really appreciated him. I appreciate his family, how he's raised. Um, I tried to put him on kickoff because um, he was a backup uh, before he was a starter, and uh, no one else thought that was a great idea. But, um, you know, like I said, I have a lot of respect, and, and I'm disappointed that we can't have a better relationship. Before he was the head coach, we, we would talk quite a bit and share notes and uh, things like that. I'm happy for him that he got his opportunity and ready to uh, ready to compete. Uh, Billy Reed, their leading receiver in the game, eight receptions, 69 yards, uh, including a touchdown. Uh, tell us a little bit about him, what you see Big, on strong, field. strong, uh, really good at reception point. You know, the quarterback puts the balls on the money, and, and uh, you know, he's just really good at reception point. They had a lot of yards after catch, uh, which is kind of surprising against the FBS team. You would assume is faster, and you would assume – all these things, but they caught the ball and ran, uh, you know, and had some long yards after catch. And uh, we got to got to really do a great job in the uh, on defense of just controlling yards after catch or yards after contact. Can you glean anything from uh, last year's film uh, watching that particular game against SIU going into this game? Now you turned them over seven <laughs> times, I think three picks and four lost fumble. Every time they fumbled the ball, you guys picked it up four. Yeah four fumbles last year yeah scored twice on defense so i mean the the it's still the same like i want to be the most physical team out there okay and i want to win that turnover margin and generally you know you, you'll feel good about things but um you know as far as last year their defense has completely changed a lot of special teams have changed i think we have a better understanding of their their personnel a lot of those guys played last year uh, not a ton of newcomers uh, that are actually playing, you know, a lot of a lot of guys back. Um, so that's really what we get from last year. Uh, as far as their defensive uh, looks, what are you going to what are you going to see? I know they, they have they gone a from th a three, four to yeah. a four, three. Yeah. So they're an even man front, which is which is different. Um, our defense is an odd. So our offense is used to executing versus odd. And then now you got to even front that uh, schematically you got to make adjustments and um, we'll see. You know, uh, I I've said it a bunch. I really, really like our old line. I think they could be one of the best in, in not only OVC, but I think we could be one of the best in FCS. But they got to prove it right because I think if they can block for Will and, and Chase, there's going to be plays to be made. And if they can protect, uh, there's going to be plays made in the, in the, the throwing the ball. And so, you know, I'm going to really lean on those those 
veteran offensive lineman to, to try and take over this football game. Two sacks uh, in the first half, no sacks allowed in half number two, and you rolled Hoskett out of the pocket a lot. Saturday. Just try to try to change launch point, you know. Um, obviously, we, we threw the ball a lot from the pocket, but I think just protection-wise and all those, and he's good. Like, he, you know, he's a big dude, so people don't think he's – He's a runner, but he's he's not bad, um, and so uh, that just creates a, a another element on offense that you got to prepare for if you're on defense. How did your uh, how did you grade out your offensive line Saturday night? I would say it was one of the higher performing uh, units on offense. I think uh, they, like I said, we didn't have any idea, and they were pretty exotic. Then all of a sudden, this came, that come, and 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 to not give up a sack in the, in the second half, I think tells you a lot they opened up some holes um i i we really need our tight ends to keep coming along um you know they were a unit that you know because of the injury and stuff we we still haven't got there and i think uh hopefully they 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 take a really big step this week well you tried i know you tried to get the tight end involved early uh, marquette murdoch was wide open up the up the right sideline and you just missed connections on that that may have gone for a touchdown but yep. uh, you 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 did make an effort to involve the tight end early. Yep, yep. And, and Will, and and they're good players. We just got to get them the experience, and they have to have the confidence to go out there and execute. Red Hawks and the Salukis, and it will be at 6 o'clock uh, at Saluki Stadium coming up on Saturday night. Let's take a quick time out more with Coach Took, uh, and we'll let you know what happened around the Ohio Valley Conference in the opening week of 2016. You're listening to the Red Hawks Coaches Show live from Wings, etc. on SEMO ESPN. Station has been growing about Wings, etc. See, Wings, etc. has those award-winning jumbo wings. They're popular for both dine-in and carry-out. Now the word is getting out about Wings, etc.'s appetizer lineup. From the ultimate nachos to the deep-fried pickle spears, frankly, they're irresistible. Friends are sharing time together at Wings Etc. They've got dining rooms filled with HD TVs tuned to the best sports programming, including NFL Sunday Ticket. The people at the next table are talking about Wings Etc.'s daily half-pound lunch special, starting at just six forty-nine. Plus, Wings Etc. has food and drink specials throughout the week, including fifty-nine cent wings every Monday. Plus, there's the kids' menu, and Wings Etc. is family-friendly with video games in the dining room. <laughs> and the whole community is excited about how Wings Etc. is locally owned and operated, and they're proud to support local athletes, their families, schools, and teams. I guess Wings Etc. is a really big deal around here. It's now time for our High School Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Jackson High School football quarterback Cooper Callis. The junior connected on five touchdown passes and ran for another in the Indian SEMO Conference win at Sykeston last Friday night, 42-7. Callis threw touchdowns to four different receivers while racking up over 400 yards passing in that victory. We congratulate Jackson High School's Cooper Callis, our Athlete of the Week. This has been our High School Athlete of the Week on the SEMO ESPN Radio Sports Network. Saturday night. The Red Hawks football team crosses the river for a showdown with the SIU Salukis at 6 o'clock. Free game coverage starts Saturday at 5.30 on SEMO ESPN 92.9 and Real Rock 99.3 FM online at SEMOESPN.com. Red Hawks football presented by Moreland Pre-Owned Center on Seamers Drive in Cape by Southeast Health. When cost and quality matter, choose Southeast Health. And by the Cape Girardeau Conservation Nature Center at Cape County Park North. And now, your ESPN Radio Network local local weather forecast. The National Weather Service says sunny and hot today and tomorrow with temperatures 90 to 92. The low is about 72 degrees. Thursday, a slight chance of a pop-up shower or thunderstorm with a high of 90. 40 percent clip of storms and a high of 86 on Friday. Chance of rain on Saturday with a high of 80. And right now, Sunday and Monday, a high of 80 degrees with plenty of sunshine. You're up to date with the latest weather forecast. Breaking on the ESPN Radio Network. This is your local home for Mike and Mike, the sports huddle, and all your favorite teams. Get it all right here. Makes my day go great. On the SEMO ESPN Sports Network. It's the Red Hawks Coaches Show. We are live from Wings, etc. in Cape Girardeau. Uh, just a scheduling note, we will be in the Jackson Wings 
et cetera, location next week. So make plans to join us there. Coach Tom Atukowitz here. Red Hawks fall 35-17 to the University of Memphis. Uh, almost 43,000 in attendance. What were your thoughts on uh, the atmosphere on Saturday at the Liberty Bowl? Man, it was great. And I'm glad you brought that up because, man, I, I had a lot of pride in, in the tailgaters and, and the SEMO faithful. Um, we kind of came in and, and I had seen some pictures of the tailgates, but when the team actually unloaded the bus, there was just a, a tunnel of red there. And that's what I wanted that, or I say I, but we need SEMO football to have a football experience in this community. You know, there hasn't been one. And, and to go be a part of, of the Liberty Bowl, a, a good game, and go be a part of that. I had uh, several guys I know had their sons on the sideline, and they got to experience that. You know, that's what college football is all about, this experience. And so um, i just really proud. It was great uh, fans. Got to see Mark uh, all night and things. And so it was all good. You know, the – Kickoff was approaching, and the stadium wasn't even a quarter full, uh, you know, getting close to kickoff. Now everyone came in, but they were all outside tailgating. Yeah. I mean, their, their tailgate is a pretty big deal. Yeah, I mean, that's a city of food and booze, right? I mean, <laughs> I, that's, I guess that's why I went there, but, um, you know, why not? It's just like SIU, like, go enjoy it. It's a great game. It's 45 minutes away. We have these spots that SEMO can tailgate um, and go enjoy it. It's going to be an unbelievable night. They're going to have it packed. I think they're calling it maroon out or whatever. And, um, you know, go go enjoy that. Go be a fan. So uh, the game against Memphis, uh, are, are they were they able to pay as much as some of the bigger schools? I know you played Arkansas in the no. past, uh, University of Missouri. I think Missouri is paying Eastern Michigan $1.2 million to come next week. I think it's a two year deal. They'll yeah. come back at a later time, but they're, they're going to make like over $2 million with two games with Missouri. I, they didn't pay you that well, did they? Well, it's a, it's a FBS uh, program coming in. So no FCS is getting that kind of money. I got but, you. Uh, Eastern Michigan is terrible. And so the, the, their phone is ringing off the hook to get scheduled <laughs> so they can ask a premium, but, you know, with us, it you know, I it was hard because Mizzou and KU they pay us in the four hundreds to five hundreds, and we only got like two fifty from Memphis, and so we didn't get the kind of money uh, that we're used to. But we got the experience, which was what I wanted. Right. I, you know, um, and so very appreciative of, of Mark getting that that game scheduled. Now Brady has to figure out how to pay the bills this year, but. Um, you know, I think it was worth it. I think that's what we should do. You know, we're playing Arkansas State uh, in the future. I don't know if I should say that or not, but uh, that's a game I really wanted. Same kind of deal. We could go be a part of uh, a great college environment, and they're not paying us a bunch of money, but I'm telling you, the, the people here and even the young people will appreciate that. And it's been a long time since they played Arkansas State in football. I'm, uh, off the top of my head, I want to say something like 2004. I mean, it's been yeah. it's been a long time. But they, they play a home and home in baseball every year. They yeah. play in basketball. We quite should play, often. right? Yeah. It's just that you don't get the paycheck, you know, that we're going to get from Ole Miss and Mizzou and KU. And it, it's basically the same trip. I mean, it's yeah. two and a half hours to Jonesboro, just like it is going to Memphis. Yeah, yeah, the, exactly. I guess Jonesboro is not exactly Memphis. No. Uh, no, no, no. You know, so just bring your own food and, and everything. Well, you mentioned that uh, Memphis is, uh, what, food and booze. Uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas is a dry city. So you it's might still have to dry? Bring, I, I'm pretty sure they used to be dry. They were dry for the longest time. So you may bring more than just your food if yeah, you're going to. Uh, yeah. Put that going, in our recruiting. Going to Jonesboro. So do, do, you, do you know off the top of your head who are some of the uh, the FBS schools in the next couple of years? Do you have any of those lined up other than Arkansas State? Uh, well, just KU, Mizzou, uh, Ole Miss, Arkansas State, and Iowa State. Okay. 
So, and these are all different years. You don't have to. I don't know what the years back back. they are. Right. I know we're playing KU next year, and Mizzou okay. the following year, and then I don't know who we play gotcha. from there. But, uh, yeah. Because there was one year, I believe, that uh, when Tim Billings was here, where there were two money games, and then one year, Eastern Illinois had three money games. Yeah. Their whole entire starting lineup all were on injured reserve too. I mean, it killed it killed them. It, it, three three money games, even two money games. That's awfully tough. Isn't it? And people are doing it. So every time Brady's my my phone rings and it's Brady Barkey, I'm worried that he's going to say that. Um, but you know, at this point, if, if you're not trying to do something like build a stadium like UT Martin is, I don't I don't understand why you would put your your players at risk like that. And if, you know, you, you have to count on money games to support your program, then you need to think about what you're trying to do. And as far as going over to SIU, um, 2010, uh, the Red Hawks won the OVC championship, but that was their first game against an FCS school in that building they had played a division two i believe like kentucky state or something like that but their first game against an fcs school southeast went over there and won that football game so you know yeah that's that's gonna be my message to my team is we are the blue collar team we have a chance to beat them for the second time in 15 years i mean these guys are four years old i mean think about that yeah they are the white collar they play in a 12 million dollar stadium their budgets double our budget Okay, and so we're going to put on a pair of blue jeans and get it on. All right, fans like to hear that. Uh, Coming up uh, around the Ohio Valley Conference uh, this week, uh, Jacksonville State is going to play at LSU. That that ought to be an interesting game. LSU uh, taking some heat for uh, losing to unranked uh, Wisconsin up at yeah uh, in Green Bay. They played that game at Lambeau Field. Uh, but Jacksonville State going to LSU, uh, they beat Ole Miss a few years ago. They had Auburn on the ropes uh, last year. Of course, you remember that could yeah. have, should have probably won the football game. You think the Gamecocks can give LSU a game on Saturday? No. No. LSU just too uh, talented. Well, huh? they just got embarrassed. They're in Tiger Stadium, and it's a night game. So, I don't know if you know what goes on oh, at yeah. Tiger Stadium – up until the game, but they got plenty of time to get right, and it'll be a, a really, really hard environment for them. UT Martin uh, plays at Hawaii. Why Why don't you get that game with Hawaii on the schedule? Yeah, exactly. Uh, he's a veteran of the conference. He's just a lot smarter than the rest of us. <laughs> but, you know, they're playing three F – just like you said, they're yeah. playing three money games because they – you know, since I've been here, there's been three – I've only been here three years almost. Yeah. There's been three stadium renovations in our own conference. Think about that. And a lot of just like Martin, you know, they got a, they did a bunch of stuff to their stadium and now they got to pay for it. And part of that is they're going to play these money games to help with that. But that's what I mean. I mean, you look at how we were three years ago, we we're one of the worst. And now three other programs made an adjustment to their stadium. And that, that needs to be on people's radar. What uh, what are or what would you have in mind if you could uh, if you could decide what renovations go in? Are you talking a whole new facility? Are you just talking about no uh, upgrading what you've got? Well, since you ask, let's just go ahead and talk about it. Right. So I would knock down the press box. I would get uh, one of those welders. You just cut it off, knock it down because that side looks good. Yeah and redo the, the wayside, turn it into the home side. You have that parking lot above and make that the parking lot, or I'm sorry, the press box, and it's got a beautiful backdrop. Then when you're driving down Broadway, you see a beautiful press box, and then you see the the natural hawk uh, landscape with the arches and, and all those things, and then just replace that one side as a start. So you'd like to see the sideline. You would go to the other sideline. I'd go to the other side. Well, they used to be over there when Mumford was a coach here, when John Mumford was a coach. That used to be Simo's sideline yeah. on that side. Now, no one's asked me my opinion, so that probably tells you where we're at and all that. 
So, Except you, I guess yeah. you've asked me my opinion. Yeah. I appreciate what, that. What was interesting is when they built the uh, when they built the the dormitory over there. I think a lot of people were, were kind of thinking maybe there would be some football, you know, some football offices or some kind of a football scenario there, kind of like uh, what Jacksonville State has. I mean, they've got football things. Has that uh, has that ever been a topic of discussion? Well, I appreciate you putting that, lobbing it up for me to hit it, but I, I, I'm not going to. So it, it was before I was here, right. so I don't know what went on, but uh, my wife's giving me the, the – she I, could I tell you. I'm kind of getting fired up. And well, I mean, you, I mean it, it, and also being the football coach, you look around, baseball's getting a whole new facelift there. Basketball yeah. just got uh, the yeah. big video board and all new seating. Uh, uh, there, This is a great time to be a Red Hawk because the, the – the, from the board of trustees to the president to the everybody's aligned. There's a commitment to athletics, and they they want us to uh, have the things that it, uh, we need to have success. So, what's the game plan against the Salukis on Saturday night? You're, you're kidding, right? I mean, you know they're listening to this, right? Yeah, well, yeah, they're they're tuned in. Yes, we're gonna win the game. All right, that's the game plan. As far as uh, uh, I know one of the questions I got afterwards, uh, especially after last week, you talked about Al Young uh, making uh, the switch to the opposite side. He's going to play some defense. Uh, how quickly until maybe the Red Hawk fans see number one out there in, uh, in a Red Hawk jersey? Uh, we're going to uh, he's going to practice in the two deep this week and see what that looks like. And if he puts some good film out, it could be as quick as this week. I think that's a little early. So we'll just see. Um, I think we'll, we. Still need to get better in the secondary, and he is a guy that has unbelievable ball skills and very talented. So we're going to see if uh, he can add value there, and if he can, we're going to play him. Uh, in the special teams unit, uh, I know there's talk about him returning punts, possibly kicks. Uh, is, is that something in the near future for him? No. Okay. All right, so we could see number one on the uh, defensive side of the football on Saturday night. Back in uh, back in Carbondale at 6 o'clock on Saturday. Coach, we'll see you then. Thanks so much for your Thank time. You. We appreciate it. That's Coach Took. That's going to do it. Uh, and don't forget, you can hear Saturday's broadcast on SEMO ESPN 92.9 and Real Rock 99.3 FM. Stay tuned. We've got uh, Rosillo and Cannell coming up next on ESPN Radio. And we'll talk to you next week from Wings Etc. in Jackson for the Coaches Show. So long.